So today I'm going to have a look at a budget tablet, a value offering from Cube. This is the iPlay 10. So it's got a 1080p screen, 10.6 inches, runs Android 6, and I believe it is basically a stock ROM on there. 32 gigabytes of storage, 2 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you can see from the packaging that this one I picked up from Banggood. This is their typical repacked box that they use made out of polystyrene so it doesn't get any damage. So processor wise, it's a MediaTek quad core MTK8163 with a maximum turbo of 1.3 gigahertz. And that's a Mali T720 GPU that's got on there. So really that's not gonna be a powerhouse of a thing, but it's selling now for around 99 US. So it's a cheap tablet. So the battery on this is 6,000 milliamp hours. And okay, we do have a charger. They've thrown in an EU one, which is good. And it also has wireless in, I think, 5 gigahertz. Well, they say it's dual band, but I doubt it would be wireless AC. So just a few instruction things on there. I play manual. Um, quality control. Check pass there. That's always good to see. So this will be 5 volts, 2 amps. Yes, it is. Very standard. So your mobile phone charger will be able to charge this. And there is a micro USB 2 cable there. So it looks actually a lot like the Cube Mix Plus. The white front on it. Maybe it is the same 1080p screen. I highly doubt it because that's the old Surface 2 Pro screen. That 10.6 inch 1080p one. So it's 604 grams and it's just under 10 millimeters thick. So for the price, the build quality feels good. It's solid, there's no real flex. I can't hear any creaks where the rear is meeting up with the front plastic of it. So up the top there, there is a VGA camera. So that's um, only 480p. And they put a two megapixel one on the rear, which I would rather have on the front. So this backing here, that's made out of an alloy and along the top and the rest of it, the frame is made out of plastic. The buttons along the top here, these are made out of metal, it feels like to me. And they've got a reasonable feel to them. They don't feel loose, so overall good so far. On the right side of the tablet, we've got two stereo speakers. So we're not going to have any decent stereo separation here because they're all coming out of the right side. And judging by the looks of it, I doubt they're going to sound that good, but I'll test them out in just a minute. And on the bottom, there is no Pogo port, so there is no keyboard dock for this. Didn't expect it. At around 100 US, you can't really. So all of our ports are located on the top left. And there's a little surprise here. There's DC in for charging, micro USB 2 for charging and data, of course and micro SD card slot, and even micro HDMI out, which is good to see in this price range, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Time to power it up. I hope there's some battery in here. And looks like there is. All right, starting up now. It took a little while, it's approximately 40, 30 seconds. So not incredibly fast there. Okay, and yeah, we do have stock Android. I can see one bloatware application, that's Cubes Ohm. Well, first, I want to just check out what exact version we have here. Uh, so, Android version 6.0, the security patch is June the 1st from last year, which isn't brilliant. And have a look at storage. Let's see what kind of free available space we get. Okay, so you're getting about 25 gigabytes there. And of course, we do have that micro SD card slot, which is great there. Now, first impressions of the screen, it doesn't actually look to be a bad panel. Um, of course, yeah, they've massive bezels on here and it's not fully laminated. And I just wanted to see also too that, uh, oh, someone looks like they've gone through, tested some things here. That probably be the factory. You can see the view sound recorder. They've gone into the file manager. In gallery, they have run something. Ah, oh, there looks like there are some demo files here. Oh, just the typical things here to show off that screen. Now, normally this price range and value entry level tablet would normally have a 720p screen on there. So getting a 1080p one 
isn't bad at all. And so far, of course, these images are extra vibrant to make it look even better than it probably really Closer look at the gap we get between the touch digitizer glass, which by the way is crystal clear, which is good to see. And then the IPS panel below, you can see the gap I would estimate to be around 1.5 or one millimeter. It's quite obvious as you can see there, if I touch the screen, you can see there is a gap there, of course. So we have the screen on maximum brightness. It came out of the box like this. So if I tweak it down, you can see just how dull it will get. Hmm. It's not the dullest there, but that should be okay for nighttime use without burning out your retinas. And you can see the blowware applications we have on there. So there are approximately, what are we looking at? Okay, FM radio is actually on there, which is another bonus to have hardware FM radio. We've got three that I can see, and these should be able to be uninstalled. Hopefully, I can just go and trash that, uninstall the app. I do believe we can. Normally, with Cube ROMs, you can get rid of all of that bloat where they put on there. I'm connected up to the internet now. I'm going to check to see if there are any wireless updates. Well, I already have, actually. There aren't. The system is currently up to date. So, I don't think we're ever going to see a patch, and I highly doubt it that this will suddenly be updated to Android 7, not in this price range. Now, if you're wondering where the microphone is, if it has one, it's located right here. It is that tiny little gap there to let sound in. So looking at the camera very briefly here, you can see that actually the viewfinder is doing all right here. It's not lagging. Shutter rate seems all right. I've got bright studio lights on, of course, at the moment. The front facing camera, well, VGA, what can you expect? It looks quite bad and a little laggy too there. So your mobile phone will definitely take a much better image than this. Brief look at the default browser performance. So I haven't installed Chrome here. You can see that is really laggy. Uh, well, my website is very image heavy as you can see, but even so, I did expect that to be a little bit faster and smoother, but I guess we can't expect too much from this chipset. But basic kind of things like this, I think it's gonna be right. Let's see how it loads in this first web page. So that was quite quick. This doesn't have as many images on it. It does have an embedded YouTube video. So hopefully that's gonna load in okay. It didn't seem to be too bad. Let's turn those speakers up to 100% and we'll have a listen to how it sounds. And it, it is, without a doubt, one of the best laptops to come out of China. So it's powered by a Core M3 7 I decided then to do, I think it was around two hours of gaming, yes, two hours and 13 minutes gaming non-stop on it, just to So the speakers don't sound too bad, that was playing that at the moment, it's in HD, but I did see a few little stutters there, you could pick up on that, hopefully, it just wasn't quite 100% fluid and smooth. So I just placed my 128 gigabyte Samsung micro SD card in here and it was detected and works fine as you can see it can be used because it's Android 6 as the portable storage or you can even use that as the internal storage for the whole tablet. I just ran and 2.2 and you can see yes a very low score as I'd expect from an old quad core MediaTek chipset you can see the lowest part there is the 3D performance. So I will test out a game, just one, to see how it does perform at gaming. So this is Modern Combat 5, and as expected, it is running quite slow, quite laggy. So this is not really a tablet I would want to be gaming on. I mean, sure, you can play games, but it looks to me like it's dipping down to about 15 or 10 frames per second at times. Making gameplay a little difficult, aiming, moving around. Wow, yeah, that is slow. So I thought it wouldn't support GPS, and it turns out I was correct here. So no GPS support on this one, so you can't use it as a navigation tool or inside a car as a dash mount or anything like that. All right, so that's all I'm gonna spend on the Cube iPlay 10 here. I feel that for the price, you're getting a very good build quality, a really nice 1080p panel. 
It's very vibrant, it's accurate to touch, and it is covered with glass, not plastic. Okay, it's non-laminated, but you kind of expect that. The ROM, it's light. You can uninstall that bloatware that was on there. There's about three applications, I think it was. Very easy to remove those. So the real problem with this tablet is the performance. So if you're a gamer, you want to play the latest, greatest and newest Android games, then really I would not even attempt it on this tablet because as you can see, the performance, Modern Combat 5 was just far too slow to be enjoyable, frustrating at times. Other titles that are older, I think, will be playable on this tablet. And if you just want to do light tasks like ebooks and internet browsing, sure, it's going to be okay for that. So it's more of a tablet, I feel, for someone that just wants basically light tasks and perhaps someone's introduction to Android tablets. For example, you've got a six year old child that wants their first tablet and they're young, they can easily drop it and you feel, well, I don't want to spend a lot of money, so I'm just going to give them something cheap to start out with, see if they like it. So it will be good for watching movies and things like that. Thanks a lot for watching this review here and I do hope to see you back in the channel soon. Bye for now.